So this is homework help from Monday, 11.1. I'm going to apologize for not posting this last night, and thanks to Marcus for pointing out that I missed it. So students can turn in that homework um, Wednesday morning since they may need an extra time to do it. So when students are finding equivalent measures, one of the things that they should keep in mind that it takes 1,000 meters to equal 1 kilometer, or 1 kilometer equals 1,000 meters. That's the conversion that they need to know here. So if they know that they have 5 kilometers, they need to say times 1,000 to find out how many meters that is. So in these two, they would do exactly that. And in D, they would do those numbers times 1,000 to figure out how many meters they have. Well, in C, if they have 17,000 meters, they're going to want to divide that by 1,000. That will help them figure out that answer. So this is the information they need to do problem one. For problem two, they need to know that 100 centimeters equals one meter, or one meter equals 1,000 centimeters. So if they have seven centimeters, I'm sorry, seven meters, they're going to have to times that by 100 to figure out how many centimeters they have. So they're going to do that in E, I'm sorry, E, F, and H. In G, they divide that by 100 to figure out how many meters, because we need to bundle them into groups of 100 to figure out the meters. So that should work for part one. For part two, students are going to have to convert one thing and then combine. So here they want to figure out how many kilometers, how many, I'm sorry, how many meters are in the seven kilometers. So if they remember what we said over here, a thousand meters is in one kilometer. This would be seven thousand. They'd add the one hundred and twenty-three to get the new total meters. So students are going to want to convert all of these kilometers. So this one, twenty-two kilometers, would be how many meters? Twenty-two thousand. And in this case, in C, it would be eight hundred and seventy-five thousand. So students are going to do that conversion there, remembering that 1,000 meters equals 1 kilometer. For here, they're going to have to remember that rule that 1 meter equals 100 centimeters. And you'll notice all the answers here are in centimeters. So thinking 7 would be 700 centimeters plus the 45 will give the student the new total of centimeters. So every time they see the meters, they're going to do times 100 so that they can figure out its equivalent centimeter. Part 3, solving with subtraction. So students are going to use that same method of conversion. That's one way that we learned to do the subtraction. That's probably the easiest way to do it. The only thing that students want to do is they want to make sure that when they do this, they change it back to kilometers. So if we look at this one, we could change all of these kilometers into meters. So we could say it's like 2,000 plus 303. That'll give us our first number, which is our subject head. So we'd have 2,303. Then we can subtract 556. Some students are still struggling with exchange, so make sure your student kind of talks you through it saying to themselves, can I do 3 subtract 6? No. So I have to come all the way over here, change the 100 to a 2. 100 turns into 10 tens. I'm going to take 1, leaving it with 9, and give myself 10 ones. When I subtract, I get 7, 4. Here I have to exchange again. I get 12 subtract 5, and it's 7. My answer is 1,747 meters, but students should remember that every 1,000 meters can become a kilometer. So this could be converted to 1 kilometer and 747 centimeters. They always want to go back to that mixed number. The other method that students can do, I'll show you on B, is they can break this into a number bond. They can change the meter into 100 centimeters and one meter. That's equivalent, right? One meter plus 100 centimeters is still two meters. From there, from the 100, they can subtract 54. They would still have one meter here because they're not subtracting any, and then they'd have a new number 
of centimeters. Either method works. Students could also say it's like 200 centimeters, subtract 54 centimeters. Whichever method works best for them. For part C, expressing it in smaller units, students are going to add. When they add, they are probably going to want to combine like units. So here, adding up the kilometers, so making one problem, 338 plus 62, and then solving 853 meters plus 71 meters. The reason that they said express your answer in the smaller unit, they want them to eventually turn it all into meters. So once they solve, students would see they could change all of these kilometers they solve for into meters, and then they combine here. Here, they're going to express their answer in the smaller unit for C, D, E, and F. Okay? On the back, it says they need tape diagrams. So students are going to be doing the same thing. They're just going to be using tape diagrams. I also encourage students to use what's called a visual model, meaning just drawing what they are seeing or thinking. So for instance, it says the length of Celia's garden is 15 meters and 24 centimeters. So I, I'm going to draw her garden, and I'm going to call this 15 meters, 24 centimeters for the length. The length of her friend's garden is 2 meters, 98 centimeters. So to me, that's a smaller piece because 2 meters compared to 15. What's the length of her friend's garden? So when I answer that question, what I'm going to be thinking of, oh, it's two, it's two meters more. I didn't read that properly. So I'm going to go back. I thought it was just two meters. That's why you got to read closely. Is two, two meters and 98 centimeters more than Celia's? So what that means is hers is actually a little bit bigger than Celia's because it's plus 200 or two meters, 98 centimeters. So the tape diagram should look like this. We should show Celia's, which was 15 meters, 24 centimeters. And her friend's, which is a little bit longer, we could show as 2 meters, 98 centimeters. To find the total, we can see that that's going to be this distance. Students would need to add both parts together. For 5, it says Sylvia ran three kilometers and 290 meters in the morning. So I'm going to draw that distance and call that her morning run. Then she ran some more in the evening. She ran a total of, here's the end, 10 kilometers. The question is, what is the distance she ran in the evening? So that's my visual picture. What that would look like is a tape diagram is we know the total, 10 kilometers. We know what she ran in the morning, 3 kilometers and 290 meters. So we're trying to find this missing amount. So to do that, we take the total, subtract the part we know, and that should find us our missing section. So try that. For question 6, it says Jenny's sprinting distance is 356 meters shorter than Tyler's. Tyler's sprinting distance is one kilometer and three meters. Hers is shorter. So this is, we'll call this one up here, Ky or Tyler. And then this one is Jenny's. And she is sprinting, um, this distance actually is what we know, 356 meters shorter. We don't know how much she actually sprints. So if we thought about Tyler's total distance as one kilometer and three meters, and we know that Jenny is 306, 356 meters shorter, to find this, we could simply take Tyler's, subtract the shorter distance, and then that will tell us how much Jenny ran. Remember, as you're solving these, you can always press pause while you solve it and then rewatch it, too, if I'm going a little fast for you. Okay, last one. The electrician had 7 meters and 23 centimeters of electrical wire. He used 551 centimeters for one wiring project. His total distance, though, of his wire was 7 meters, 
23 centimeters, they want to know how much does he have left. So if he used that much, how much is in this part? So again, we could take the total, subtract the part he used, and that will tell us how much is left.